Juan, welcome to the Joey C. Baseball tonight. Tonight, tonight we have John Duffy, pitching coach for the Jacksonville Suns. John has 20 years of coaching experience. He played six years in the Tiger organization in 98. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joe. Pleasure to be here. John, uh, tell us about John Duffy. Where does John Duffy come from? Uh, born and raised in Mobile, Alabama. Great baseball town. A lot of Hall of Famers. Hank Aaron, Willie McCovey, uh, Satchel Page. Uh, went to McGill Tulin High School four years. Played four years at South Alabama for Eddie State. Uh, you and your wife Angela still reside in Alabama? Yes. Uh, we live across the bay now. My parents still live in Mobile, about five minutes from Hank Aaron Stadium. My dad works as an usher at the stadium. He's retired now. Uh, he loves, loves baseball as well. Uh, my mom's dad was a catcher back in the 20s with played against the likes of people like Babe Ruth, played 13 years in the minor leagues. Uh, and he's the one who got me started playing baseball when I was four years old. Okay, you started playing at four years old. Did you did you sign out of high school or did you sign out of college? I signed as a free agent out of college. I was uh, 12 and two my senior year at South Alabama. Didn't get drafted. Went to uh, the NBC tournament in Wichita, Kansas. Pitched 15 innings in three days and got signed at 3 o'clock in the morning by a Tiger Scout. Uh, funny story about that. Calls me up on the phone. I thought it was somebody playing, playing Frank on Obviously, yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I said, who the hell is this playing Frank on me? And I hung the phone up. Phone rang right back. This so-and-so from the Tigers don't hang up the phone. I want you to come down to my room and we're going to talk about having a want to sign you to a contract. So I did, and the rest was history. That was 1983. 1983. Now you played. You spent six seasons in the Tiger organization, and uh, at the various levels. What level did you wind up with before you retired? Uh, I got to Triple A. Uh, my first year, I didn't play because I was signed late. And I went to spring training the next year. Made the Florida State League team out of spring training. Had some shoulder issues. Went home for a couple of weeks. Went to rookie ball. Then went to rookie ball double A. Back to the Florida State League. And then three years in double A, three quarters of a year in triple A, back to double A, and then got released. Was uh, was Kevin Bradshaw and Arnie Bell any of your teammates back then? Kevin Bradshaw was, yes. Uh, Dwayne Hosey, coach for the uh, Huntsville Stars here, was uh, a year behind me or so. Uh, but Bradshaw was a good a good teammate. Yeah, great teammate. Uh, I believe he's the field coordinator now. Yes, he is. Tigers. So... After you finally realized that, uh, and we all, we all, it all comes a time in a player's career, whether he's a hitter or a pitcher, you know, good Lord comes down and says it, it's time to retire. Well, they retire you sometimes. At, at some point, you get retired. After You're told got, at some after point. I, after I was finished playing uh, with Detroit, I played a year with Kansas City in Double A. They tried to make me a starter. I think I had 13 starts. I was. 0-1 with 12 no decisions. And I've been a reliever most of my career in my right. league, so I'd get to five innings and then I'd get wore out. Right. And plus the shoulder issues sure. kept on and on, and right. I pitched all those years with it. The next year, I went around to like five different camps spring training. I was 28, getting ready to turn 29 years old. Uh, couldn't find a job. So I went home for the real work, got a real job. Well, I got a phone call from the Yankees. Uh, That's right, you were a bullpen. I was a, a batting practice pitcher for the Yankees in 1990 for a year. In New York, right? In New York. Uh, travel around with the team all the time. And I had a job during the game. How was that working for that team? Uh, George was a different man. He was. Uh, he demanded excellence. Uh, that year they finished dead last. They had a lot of injuries. Uh, that was the year Manley had a hurt back. And that was the year that uh, Cincinnati ended up beating the Bash Brothers in with Lou Pinella in the World Series. George, if you were loyal to George and you did the job for him, he took care of you, didn't he? Yes, he did, from what I understand. I was there one year. Uh, had a little misunderstanding with the front office because of one of the players and didn't get my contract renewed. Uh, so the next year I was out of baseball and then I started coaching, helping my high school team out for a couple of years and then I got back in with the Cubs for two years. Uh, then I was a replacement player in the strike in 94, 94. I was Seattle. But the reason I went to Seattle was to get a pitching coach job right, with right. them, and then the strike went on so long. You wanted to be going back to pitching. Right, and they had to 
you know, filled the position. So I went to an independent team and ended up folding because of finances. Um, a couple years of independent ball, then I got hired by Tampa Bay. Spent three years in Tampa Bay. Got let go the day before 9-11. Um, a year off, another year in independent ball, brought to Massachusetts in the Northeast League, won a championship there, and then I got hired by the Marlins the following year after they won the World Series, and it was my ninth year with the Marlins, 2004. You know, I met you last year, and i become pretty good friends with you. And the one reason I wanted to have you on the show is because I've never seen a guy with compassion and the love for the job you do currently, for the, for the compassion you have for your pitchers. Let's let's talk about where you're at right now and, and, and what do you want from your pitchers each year? Well, first of all, when I was playing with Detroit, I didn't have a pitching coach. We had one pitching coach for six teams. So you saw your pitching coach coordinator Maybe two times a year. Right. Not very many days. Right. Uh, John Schmoltz was my roommate. And we were, he was 19, I was 25. And I remember the day he got traded from Detroit. He was born and raised in Detroit. You know, that might go down as Detroit's worst trade in history. Maybe. Well, you know, at the time, Doyle Alexander went 9 0 down the stretch. And then the Tigers got beaten in the playoffs by Minnesota. That year. But that's really was a turning point for me, helping him out, helping other guys out, because I played for a major league manager right. for four years, and they said if you played for him four years, it's like playing eight years in my league. So right. I was ahead of the curve as far as that went with guys. So that, that's really when I decided I wanted to become a coach. You, you, you know, I've watched you, and Last year you had a lot, a lot of close games. Uh, last year you had a lot of run run games. I think. And the compassion I, I, I see you have, when you lose by a one run game, it, I watch you just you get so frustrated in certain areas of the game. I mean, what would you like to see? What, what, what's your biggest dream for when you're, when you're the pitching coach for your five starters and your relief pitchers? I mean, what's your goal? What, what do you hope in a perfect world happen each and every year? In a perfect world, you try to make them better every day. You try to give them the work ethic, understand the process that it takes to get to the major leagues. But the biggest thing is the mental capability from day to day, from pitch to pitch, from out to out, from inning to inning, and, and let that carry on from the starter to the reliever to the closer to the next day and it just keeps going and going and going on through the 140 games. And at the end of the year, if you've done everything that you asked them to do and they've responded and they've understood the process, then you have an opportunity to be in the playoffs and you have an opportunity to win a championship. Right. And, and speaking of championships, you were the pitching coach for Jacksonville and you guys won back-to-back -back championships 09 and 2010, correct? Correct. I was here in 10. Rico News, who's a uh, bullpen coach for the Marlins, was here in 09. Uh, he took half of my pitchers from the A ball that year <laughs> to help him win the championship up here. Which, you know, that's the way we, that's the way we roll and that's the way we work. That's player development. That's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, I mean, how many you never get any more satisfaction out of winning the championship and seeing those guys progress and then seeing them go to the major leagues and be successful. And that's where the gratification comes in because, you know, as coaches, we don't make a lot of money in the minor right, leagues. Uh, and it's a grind. I mean, I've been 30 years in this game, 20 years as a coach, 20 years riding the bus, bus. day and night, you know, six months out of the year. And, and sometimes it's hard and you miss your family. You don't get to see your family a lot, but that's the way it is. And that's I, I've been in baseball for you're, you're one of the first guys in the ballpark and one of the last leagues ever did. Just about every day. I try to prepare myself for the next day, the night before, when I leave here. Last year, you, you had a kid named Brad Hand. How was it for you today that he went up and you actually got to sit there and watch him pitch in the uh, I was happy for him, and he was a part of that 010 championship team. He came up here as a 20-year-old, handled it very well. Uh, 
Was he ready to pitch in the major leagues this year? Last year, probably not as a finished product, but he's taken that step forward. He handled it, and now he's moved on. And I think as he progresses and matures, you're going to see a pretty good player down the road. Um, what? Uh, What's your goals for this year with your pitching staff? Do you have, do you have a young pitching staff? Or do you have a do you have a, a veteran pitching staff? I mean, do you have a lot of guys that just came up from A-ball on your pitching staff? We've got a lot of guys that were here last year at the end of the year. Four out of five in the rotation were here. Uh, some bullpen guys had some experience here. Some guys are coming off of injuries coming back. Uh, the guys that came back, you want to get them prepared for the next level and eventually for the major leagues. And there's a reason why they're back here, because they didn't do the things consistently that they needed to do last year. And with the money spent in the major leagues and with the guys that are on the 40-man roster that were here last year and the year before have all conglomerated in AAA now, you know, you kind of got a little bit of a backlog. Sure. So they've got to more or less now earn their way out of here. And the mental part of it, of them number one being here and not being happy with what they're doing, is the one thing they've got to overcome and be able to handle down the road. Okay, and as a pitcher, and these guys start progressing, they sign, whether it's college or high school, they sign, they show up a rookie ball, they go to low A ball, some of them, some, some, some will go through the whole ranks, rookie ball, low A ball, A ball, double A, triple A. Now at that at that point, you're talking six levels, six different pitching groups. How important as a player developer for one organization for all the pitching coaches to be on the same page so this pitcher don't get changed somewhere down the line that could either help him or possibly you know not be good for him if he's if he's taught by you. Let's say you got a pitcher for two years here and you got him focused and you got him on the path that the organization wants and what John Duffy's happy with. And, and, and based on your criteria for your organization, and then you get a new pitching coach that's not from the organization, but one year, and he goes up and starts changing the pitcher. How how does that hurt or help the pitcher? Well, in spring training, we have meetings and we have we talk amongst ourselves every morning when we're doing drive work, towel drills on the mound in spring training. The guys come out and we talk about those things and we talk about the things that, that their flaws and what they need to control because you know. We all have flaws as a, as a player. Absolutely. Whether you can control that flaw and be consistent is whether you're going to be able to make that adjustment right. when you get to the major leagues. And eventually, I try to teach you guys that through the mechanics and all the work we do and all the mental stuff we do, eventually you're going to be your own best pitching coach. Right. And if you can understand that, understand your body, understand how to make adjustments, then my, that makes my job a lot easier. Sure. It makes everybody else's job a lot Absolutely. easier. Absolutely. And with the video now and whatnot, and the communication that we can do back and forth from here to AAA, from here to the high 18s, uh, we seem to stay on the same thing. That's good. That's very important. Uh, are you a golfer? Love it. Big time. Big time golfer? Love it. I'm we, not know, we, know you, anymore, we know you enjoy a good cigar, too. Oh, there's no question. No question. So, where do you foresee John Duffy? five, six years down the line? Where would you like to be? What's your projected for your life, for, for John Duffy? You know, I, I would like to have an opportunity, you know, to be a bullpen coach or maybe eventually a switch coach in the major league. But if that doesn't happen, I enjoy what I do. It's not because I'm getting paid a lot of money to right. do it. I just enjoy the game of baseball. Right. I've been in baseball all my life. Right. It's in my blood. Uh, and I will continue to do this as long as I'm able to do it. At some capacity, whether it be here, whether it be somewhere else, whether it be in the major leagues, whether it be in the minor leagues, right. it's not going to change well, I mean, about it, my approach. It, again. You know, my philosophy is, you know, and, and, and myself working in the minor leagues as many years as I've had, and to watch the grind every day for coaches and players. Obviously, you have to love what you do. I mean, some coaches, there's some coaches I talk to that can care less than a coach or manager, but they like. Oh, yeah. They like to develop players. Uh, that's what they that's what they feel they were born to do, and and and, and they, they they don't care if they spend thirty or forty years in the minor leagues. Well, I've spent thirty as it is already, so another ten or whatever won't change the way I go about it. And I enjoy. I just want to see the kids have the opportunities that I didn't get as a minor leaguer myself 
coming through the ranks, and I had a pitching coach, maybe things would have been different, maybe they wouldn't have it. But I vowed when I when I started coaching that I would try to give the guys my experience and the experience I'd gained over the years to the people that I was around in the game of baseball to try to give them every opportunity to achieve their dream. That's awesome. You got a little break this year. You got the new team in Pensacola, which puts you almost home. So uh, how many? I believe you played them three times on the road. Three times there. We go to Mobile twice, which is my hometown. So that's Pensacola's 40 minutes from Mobile. So you're going to spend about so 30 days of this season home. Pretty close to it, or you know, at least I get to see the family a lot more this year, and it'll make things a little bit more enjoyable. That's awesome. What's a typical off-season day for John Duffy and Mobile? Oh, uh, if I'm not playing golf, I'm going fishing. Spending time with the wife, trying to keep her happy and take her places as much as we can. But uh, there's six or seven days out of the week that we to play golf and fish. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, John, I tell you what, it's been a pleasure having you on. You're, a, you're an awesome guy. The time that I've got to know you the last two years. I'm, I'm glad to call you my friend. We hope to have you in the future on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, John Duffy, pitching coach, Jacksonville Suns. This is the Joey C. Baseball Show. Tomorrow, we have the legendary. Andy Barquette, who's one of my dear, dear friends and is the manager of Jacksonville Suns on the show tomorrow. As we promised, we're going to continue to bring you mounds and mounds of great guests, great baseball people. So stay tuned to the Joey C. Baseball Show. Until then, thank you. Have a great night. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, awesome.